So, hello there, folks. Good morning. It's a uh, good day here. It's another episode of uh, Virtual Cast, but it's a special episode. Uh, we're going to dive back into uh, Kyle's Top 100, 75 through, through 51, yeah. So, another 25 games that we're going to talk about, and I'm going to comment on them if I can. And everyone who's going <laughs> to join us for this ride can also comment on those games, say that those are bad choices and or, or good choices. I don't think there are any bad choices on my list. <laughs> you think that, yeah. <laughs> That's how I usually is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I I couldn't find the 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 better way to to uh, kind of a you know stream and stream at the same time and then show you the uh, show you the games uh, and like uh, you know numbers and games and do the slideshow thing. I was like, oh, whatever. I think I could do that, but it would take a lot of time. And so I thought, like, oh, let it be. So I'm going to do it the old way, like we usually do during the virtual cast. I'm just going to do the search for BGG. And, you know, another good thing about that one is that I can I can be surprised, you know. Like, one thing, if I would do the list beforehand, I would know your games. At that That's not true, you would. Yeah, that would not be <laughs> so exciting for me to be here. Okay. So you could just... Well. Do you might solo know them anyway, but <laughs> yeah, you, you could be like that as you can see here. Boom, and you're alone on the stream. Oh, oh, wow, it feels so lonely here. But let's go back and uh, do whatever we want to do. Oh, oh now we're back. <laughs> no way All right, again. anyway. So, without further ado, um, let's start. But before that, what was your game number 76? Number 76 was a feast for Odin. So we ended up... The last one we talked about. The last one. So we ended up with feast for Odin. So the next game should be even better than feast for Odin. It is. I mean, it is better it is. than a feast for Odin. <laughs> oh my god, so, what is it? Okay, number, number 75. 75 is a game that I actually really misjudged initially. The game is called Australia. I hate the name. That's A-U-Z Australia. Yeah. Uh, with a big capital Z. So this is, uh, again, we've talked about this one before, but this is the Cthulhu farming route building game. And yeah. I, I initially I misjudged it. I thought it looked kind of silly. I read the rules and I didn't love it. Uh, but then I started playing it. And every time I've played it, it's gone over really well. It's a, a very silly match of, uh, of themes between fighting Eldritch gods and other monsters and farming and building networks of rails but somehow it works together really well it's a very fast game you don't definitely don't have enough time to do what you want to do because as soon as you get past a certain point the monsters start messing things up so it's really just a game of trying to survive to the end and do as best as you can uh and it's i'll admit it doesn't look the best but it's a lot of fun to play i've, I've never had it not work when I've when I've played it with people, so that's my number seventy-five, Australia. Australia, all right. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> Ozzy. Uh, no, I, I, I was thinking about this game. Um, it's also um, it's here. You, you can buy it in Estonia as well. I was looking at that at the board game shop, local friendly shop, and I was like, mm, it's quite expensive. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I will like that, though. I I like some uh, Marty Wallace games, uh, but I like him on that lighter side. But this one seems to be like on the heavier side, like a few acres of snow, kind of a deck building that in that. As I understand, no, not really, not at all. There's but, there's really no deck building. You can buy okay. cards that give you special oh. abilities. Okay, but okay. So. Once you have them, you have them. It's it's so the way that it works is you've got this this table of actions you can take, and each action costs a certain amount of time. And when you do an action, you put a cube on it, and then you spend the time moving yourself up the time track. And then if you want to do that action again, you've also got to pay money for every time you've done it before. And okay. so, uh, really, and then eventually there's an action you can do which essentially wastes it one time, but it clears everything off because you'll run out of money very quickly if you have to keep paying for these things. Okay. So it, it's, it's more of that type of a game. There's, it, I don't think there's any deck building in it at all. So yeah. like a usual tight economy. 
thing. Yeah, it, it, but it's you know it's it's one that you should you might try if if you know somebody who has a copy or if it's available on the cruise or something like that. Okay. Uh, you don't need to buy it if, if if you don't know that you love it. But I, I think it yeah. works really well. Good. Anyway, all right. So now number seventy five, Australia. Let's go to number seventy four. Number 74 is a game that is being reprinted. It was a game that used to be really high up, but I just don't play it enough anymore. The game is Eclipse. Okay. This is the, uh, the Finnish space exploring game. Not, I'm, I'm sure there might be other games by that title. But this is the... The old version. Know, always, yeah, the old one. I don't have the new one yet. I don't think it's out yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and there have been some expansions. One of them was good, and I think the other... I think there were two, and I don't think I even ever played the second one. But this is this is a game that I often felt like it, it sort of takes the Twilight uh, Imperium theme and it kind of mixes it with almost through the ages mechanisms, and I I find it fascinating. It's it's very big, and that is its number one problem is that it's a, it takes up a lot of space, but really you're exploring the galaxy and sort of building your economic engine by colonizing these different planets, and as you do that you'll get the cubes off your board and that will enable other bonuses and you can also customize your ships to make them hit better hit harder you can have them be small little run and gun type things with a huge laser beam but if they take one hit they die you know it's it's there's a lot of customization in it a lot of exploration as a two or three player game i think it's fantastic i've never played it with more than two or three i don't think and i doubt that i would i think it would take too long but i think with the expansion you can play with up to nine which is lunacy, but yeah, <laughs> but I I really like it. I'm excited to see how the new edition looks. They sent me a play mat for it. The oh, new edition? Yeah, a couple months ago, but the actual game hasn't showed up. So, uh, I mean, this is the one. This <laughs> is the uh, it has the mat as well. It seems that's that the might, new edition. Well, I might be the old edition with a play mat. Oh, it's uh, I don't, gameplay uh, I, Eclipse S in 2018, so uh, it's well, like maybe, a prototype for... Okay. I don't know. Yeah, the new one is A New Dawn for the Galaxy, I think is the subtitle, and the old one was like Dawn of the Galaxy. But S Second Dawn anyway. for the Galaxy, yeah, that's the oh, one. There we go. Yeah, well, that must, that must be the new one. I don't know what's changing. I just, I like the game enough that I, I figured I would get the new edition. Uh, it, it has some upgrades, I'm sure, in it. But it's a, it's a great, even the old one, which is what I've got on my shelf, is a great game that I wish I played a little bit more than I do. That's why it's not as high as it used to be, but I've never not enjoyed it when I've gotten it to the table. Yeah, I've never was into uh, epic sp space themed games usually. I mean, like, I, I could try some, and I I was about to try the... Um, what's the other one they did? They called the, the lighter version of Twilight Imperium. Uh, oh, what is the, that one called? The, the NSK games. Uh, yeah, Exodus, I know which one you mean. Yes, that's right. That's, that's yeah, the one. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so I was thinking about that one. I was like, um, maybe I should buy it. And the, it wasn't a Kickstarter as well. It was like a new expansion, mm -hmm. second expansion, something like that. I was like, um, should I do that? Should I buy it? But I was like, oh, I don't care, really, because epic space theme games are usually really long. Even even if it's a lighter version, mm -hmm. with my play group, it's. Uh, not a lighter version it's always a long yeah. game and long games are epically long games usually in my group so i was like no nah, i don't i don't want to teach yeah. too many rules and i have some heavier euro games and and like i'm i'm more into streamlined games right now so yeah this one is is a very heavily themed euro game i i think is more it's more of a heavily themed euro game than a space game yeah um, i've heard that for, for what it is uh, that's neither a plus nor a minus for me, but it's, I don't know, it's lots of those space games, the, the big ones tend to have a lot of negotiation, which I don't like because that just sort yeah. of allows people to filibuster out the game length. Uh, and this one doesn't really have that. So that's mm, what, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I liked it, but at least I don't remember it having that. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could add that in <laughs> if that's how your group wants to play. But yeah. it was it's it's more of a exploration an exploration and, and uh, Euro engine building game with with a, a, a taste of space exploration mm. than a heavy space game. But anyway, mm. it's probably worth trying at some point. Mm. But don't go out and buy it, especially if there's a new edition coming. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my um, just a just small note that my go to space theme like a more epic game is the Empires of the Void Two. So 
which also doesn't have negotiation that much. So, mm -hmm. so which would be a nice touch. All right. Anyway, uh, let's go to number seventy-three. Am I right? That is the next one. Seventy-three is a newer game on the list. This came out at Gen Con last year, and I kind of bought it sight unseen. But ended up really, although the first game was kind of rough because I think I played it with you and got some rules wrong because I didn't, I don't know, I must have been tired. The game is Everdell. It is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, I, it's a, f a fine little game. It's a very pretty game. It's a game where you're kind of, I don't know, really even how to describe it, but you're acquiring cards and trying to build up your, your, your money. I, I don't really think it's so much of a deck building game but maybe there's some of that in there there's a little bit of worker placement there's an obnoxious huge tree which i hate but thank you thank <laughs> but you it looks nice um yeah <laughs> it, but it, it's it's really not very functional it just takes up a lot of space yes and essentially makes it into a two-player game because you can't really have anybody sit behind the tree yes um hate it <laughs> but i like the game uh, regardless of, of my thoughts about that tree. It's it's an interesting game where you can... It's it's almost like a tapestry in that you might yeah. be in a different phase than somebody else is just based on how you took actions and how you, how you used your time in the game. But you've essentially got some cards and you're trying to construct this city and the city's limited in space. So you have a very limited amount of opportunity to play the cards. Some of them work together. Sometimes you're collecting different symbols so that you can get income on future turns. It's it's an odd game and a difficult one to describe, but it's one that if you, you know, if, if it intrigues you at all visually, it might be an interesting game to try. And I, I have the first expansion for it, which I have not played yet. The Pearl Book? I, every time I'm, I'm sorry? The Pearl Book? Yeah, I have it. I just haven't played it, and I ordered the next yeah. two. Uh, it's one of those games mm. where every time I'm sitting down to play something new, even last night I was thinking, maybe I should get Everdell out. Uh, but I ended up going with something uh, that was newer and more pressing and sitting next to me. So, <laughs> uh, it's. but I, I really like Everdell, uh, obviously, since it's on the top 100 list. And that's my number 73. Yeah. Though, um, the first time we played it, I don't even remember what we played wrong. I played it eventually, we, like much later. So yeah, I don't what know. we played wrong was the the uh, your ability to access that sort of tableau of cards in the middle. There's I forget what it's called, but there's I think twelve cards that are kind of out or uh, that are always on the table and available. And we had some trouble getting cards because I had uh, misinterpreted the rule about when one can access those. So <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's like a three mark. It's it's a free market. You can just grab the card right, which you there. can always build yeah. and. Uh, we, you know, do, in our pool, learning yeah. game, we we just only ever were able to access it when the when something specifically mentioned it, and yeah. that obviously that, that kind of bogged the game down a little bit. Uh, so it, it's much better if you play it with the right rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I played with the right rules, and I mean, like I I went through the rules myself as well. So just to be sure, because I remember you said we played something wrong. It was like, okay, let me see what we like how to play it. So. And uh, it's nice. It's cute. I agree. Um, it's it's a good game. I, I I cannot say anything like really bad about this one. But and and as you said, it reminded me like though I, I played Tapestry much later. I, I can feel uh, the same connection yeah, with Tapestry because you have those uh, resources and your resources are like your action points. So that's how it like kind of works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it, the blow building is nice, and getting those cards as a free kind of a, a free action, but get, get, getting cards for free because you have built a previous card of that kind of a type yeah. or something like that. Like you build a home, then you can get a creature inside. So it's it's nice, but it was I don't know. Sometimes I felt like for someone it was easier, for someone it was not. And the restriction of me building up to 15 cards in total, I kind of felt like it, it's it's a restriction. I want my engine yes. to, to kind of a flow <laughs> and, and grow even bigger in this game. And it's a worker placement game, like a straightforward worker placement game. You put your meeple out, you get something. Yeah, I I liked it, but it didn't catch me. It was nothing extremely special. It was cute. 
but yeah, I want some crunch to it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's well, that's my opinion though. Yeah. yeah. So number go. 73. Anyway, uh, let's go to number 72 if I'm right. All right. Number 72 is a game that I have not yet explored to its fullest. It's a game that I, I really enjoy and I've been enjoying it for a while. The game Seventh Continent. I see. And it's, we've talked about it before. You know what it is. It's it, essentially an exploration game, almost a choose-your-own-adventure. You've got, you you find yourself on an island and you explore it, and eventually it kind of tells you what you have to do. I mean, you're you're given some hints at the beginning, and you're trying to go through. I, I do wish the game were able to give you a hint as to how long it was going to be. The uh, the side of the box says something like five to a thousand minutes, and I I know I've played games on both ends of that spectrum. Uh, <laughs> it's it, but it's it's a lot of fun because you you learn more about this continent as you go through it, and so if you play that first that first story and and finish it, then you kind of start to see things that you'll remember for the second and the third and the fourth. So they're a little bit shorter. Just came out with an expansion, which I've played a little bit of, but I just have not been in the mood to get it out and play it alone. Um, honestly, I think I recently played Tainted Grail, which almost does the same thing for me, but a little bit better. But I, I, I still really like Seventh Continent, and it looks like it's going to be more available now. There's, a, a, I guess, a slimmed down version that you can get. So... It's, it's worth trying. It's, it's a great adventure game if that's what you're in the mood for. Yeah, I <laughs> you're gonna love it because uh, I got this game like a long time. The, the second Kickstarter that was done last year already, I think yeah. something like that mm -hmm. came in. So I've not touched this one yet. So I've not played this one oh. yet because I want to play with. Like it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna love it. I'm, I'm like I'm sure because I love the story and exploration games. I just I just love them. I, I like to explore the map and things. Like it's one of my favorite things. And but as as everybody seems to, you know, like like you said, it can be on various spectrums of time. Like it can be a thousand minutes. <laughs> it can be like though I'm I'm sure it's going to be around like you know six seven hours for, for me if I was to start playing and. Uh, I want to play it with, uh, like, a, as a two-player game, because I don't really like to play solo. And two two players is like the most that this game should probably be. I I don't know if you yeah. agree. Yeah, I mean, so the way the game works is you kind of have a shared life pool. So mm -hmm. if you have more players, it means you're going to be able to use do fewer actions. Is is really how it works. As a solo game, it's fantastic. I played it as solo and with two. And I enjoyed both of those. I, I especially yeah. enjoyed the, the two-player one because I'd already played a lot of it solo and I knew where some things were and I knew where some surprises were so I was able to sort of watch while the other person was discovering those. And I, I tend to enjoy that, sort of knowing what's coming but not saying anything about it. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, as the five to a thousand minutes, nobody ever really complains about the five-minute version one. That's... <laughs> I mean, if you die in the first five minutes, you just set it back up again. It's the thousand-minute option that's a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little yeah. on the extreme side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. So I love to playing that, but I need to find those. Like, I need to be sure, like, I have enough time to play it so I can enjoy it roughly, and I'll just I mean, know end it abruptly. People will say that say that there's a way to save it, but that I've never found to be very intuitive. You can like, do stories. it, but kind of uh but or like or, or like tainted grail for that matter it was i mean there's a way to save it but it just sort of felt like you were undoing a lot of progress if you did that um and i just i, I just played it where since i live alone i could just leave it out and if i were playing it with somebody we would be done for the day and then say okay well we'll just come back and pick it up tomorrow um and <laughs> just leave it out on the table rather than trying to put it back in the box but I don't know. It's it's other big problem is that it takes up a ton of space. Yeah. So, and there's a lot of sort of going through and sorting things out. But I still enjoy the game. The game's a lot of fun. All right. Anyway, let's go, go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. The next one is number seventy-one, 
And at number 71, we are talking about evolution. This is mm-hmm. the uh, Nor- North Star Games version. Yeah. I haven't played that original, I think, Russian version. But I'm assuming it's probably close to the same, although I think the other one has more expansions. This is, um, this is a fun little game about evolving and trying to stay alive. And what you do, you know, you're not any specific species in this game. There are many of these games where you're the spiders or the, or the, the reptiles or something, and you're vow, vying for supremacy like... Um, Oh, what was that old game? Anyway, uh, um, the, uh, or origin of dominant species. That's the one. Um, yeah. Anyway, in this one, you, what you're really doing is trying to get the most food. Your food is going to be your points, and you can upgrade your species to make it more able to survive in in different conditions. As time will goes by, will go by. There will be moments of feast and moments of famine. And if you are well built, you can survive the famine years either by, you know, faster access to food, access to food outside of this sort of common pool, or of course by eating other people, other other, other people's uh, species. And that's just kind of fun. It's an interesting game of okay, when am I going to upgrade to this? You might make yourself a super carnivore, but you're not able to climb trees, and so everybody hides in a tree, and then you slowly die. It's it's just a very interesting play of of the way that these different things there's a way to counter everything and you can go for a lot of small species or a few really big ones that have to eat a lot it's it's not a long game it's a very in your face kind of mean game because you will actively be trying to destroy other people but it somehow manages to do that without feeling painful like some of those take that type games do so mm. i i really find it an interesting take on the concept of evolution and this style of a game it also has the uh what is it sinclair oil first player marker so Mm -hmm. (laughs) that's just kind of fun too i i've not it's not for everybody not everybody loves this game as much as i do but i really i've always really found it quite intriguing so yeah there you go i played this one i played this one i was like i don't know just doesn't click with me it was it was nothing special that's it mm-hmm. and the designer asked me in the forums as well i, I was commenting about that like didn't didn't click with me i was like tell me why like you have to know why and it was like so persistent that it annoyed me a little bit because i do understand the designers must stay like you know uh, must defend their game which is nice i mean like but to some extent if i just say i didn't like it then leave it alone. I just didn't like yeah. it. So that's when that's why I never came back to evolution because of designer a little bit. Was this the Russian that. version or was this the North Star version? The North Star, the Capucci was was the name of the designer. Okay. Oh uh, well. yeah, Dominic Rapuchetas, yeah. So he okay. was there. You, you, like you right, must well, know why did you like why didn't you like it? I don't know. I just I just didn't like it. Well, th- this this game has oddly enough been through several evolutions. <laughs> yeah, I think the North Star. I mean, there's a even over here. There's a, it, it's a very difficult game to buy, not because it's hard to find. I mean, that company <laughs> certainly puts it in your face and gives you lots of opportunities to buy it. But there's the the special version that's only available at Target. That's a simple version, and then there's the Climat version, which I've only played once, and I felt it like it complicated things in a way that didn't make them very much more fun. And then there's just the basic one, and then there's the bird expansion, and then there, I don't know, it's its a its a yeah. weird one to buy, but I, I quite like it. I like the basic version. I don't mind the birds expansion. I think it's kind of fun, but that's kind of it for me. Yeah, so evolution. Anyway. Let's go to the next Evolution, one. number 71. Number seven. 70 is my next one. Number 70 is a game that when it came out, I remember I was just so blown away by it that I was playing it. I mean, it, I played it many times in a row. It's still fairly popular around here. The game is Heaven and Ale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it I is a... Uh, <laughs> it, it looks a lot more... The picture makes it look a little bit more exciting than it actually is. Uh, uh, but <laughs> No. This, this one is, is not exciting. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm saying it makes the game look more exciting than it actually is. Whether you think it's exciting at all, that, that my statement holds true. 
Uh, it's an interesting game where you're moving around this track. You can see there in the middle on that picture. Uh, and you, you move around and you can only move in one direction and you'll take the action you move to. And if you're farther, but unlike many games like this, if you're farther behind, that doesn't mean it's your turn. That's a, that's a, a rookie mistake in the game. So you, you're, you're, but if you pass certain actions, you won't be able to do them again. Money is extremely tight in this game. You're trying to fill your, uh, your board and there's a light side and a dark side and on the dark side you get money by placing things and on the light side you get uh, points by placing things and then you're moving up different types of uh, ingredients and that's going to be your score is based upon where, where you finish with these ingredients and you look at sort of the, the lowest one that you've got and and get different bonuses based on that. So you're trying to move everything up so that your lowest one is not as low as some of your others. But if you if you do that, you're going to find that you don't have access to very many special actions. There's a lot of, of, of things to figure out in this game. It's a very intriguing puzzle. And I don't know if there's one solution. Uh, I have an expansion that's on its way. Uh, it's been on its way for a while, though, so I'm hoping it actually gets here. And I, But I really like this game. Um, I, I think I, I do wish it had a little bit more variety in some of those bonuses because it's always the same bonuses each game. But other than that, I think it's a really good game, especially it, it's one that I don't even mind with with more than two or three players. I played it with four and I didn't find that it dragged. Uh, but I, I just really I think this is an intriguing puzzle. And even though it doesn't look all that interesting and there's not a whole lot of interesting stuff that you're doing. Uh, I, <laughs> I I think that the the cha the mental challenge this game gives me is is worth it, and so that's why I really like Heaven and Ale. Yeah, uh, nothing to say really. So, uh, one thing is that well, like uh, uh, I heard about this game is like mm, sounds interesting, and then I'm like I'm looking at the cover. The, the cover is like it's it's okay. I mean, like it, it's a little bit intriguing, well, you know. <laughs> it's, the it's, cover it's, is the only art in the game, so yeah, yeah. And then I look at the boards, and I look like in, kind of inside the game, and then I realized it's like Castles of Burgundy, which I'm sorry if I insult somebody who loves uh, Castle Burgundy, especially the art of Castles of Burgundy. But if somebody pukes on my game. That's how Castle of Burgundy looks like, and it's almost the same. I well, just don't, it, it, yeah. It, it looks very similar. I mean, it's, I, I, I see where you're going, coming from from the art direction. Uh, the gameplay is, is not related to Castles of Burgundy at all. I, I call those types of artworks uh, the Golden Ages Syndrome, so... Well, it's, it's not as bad as that. But... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. But it, 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 it's not a beautiful game, and it doesn't look very exciting, although the pun is kind of funny. Not at all. But, well, it's boring it's as hell. Anyway, but I, I think I think it's one you might want to try before you buy, and it's definitely on the heavier side of, of this type of game. But I I find it fascinating. Yeah, sure it is. My God. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <Not actually>. let's. <laughs> anyway, the so, next game. Moving from one game with kind of weird looking hex pieces. To another game with weird-looking hex pieces, my number 69 is Nirishima Hex, with an exclamation point. And That's I me. have now, I think, upgraded to the new version. I think I gave my old version away, finally, because there's just more expansions for the new version. It's a game that is, in theory, playable with more than two players, but in actual fact, it's a two-player game. Uh, <laughs> well, what you have is these little armies that are hex-shaped, Hex, hexagonal armies, and you pull your units out of a bag, you've got, I think, three each turn, and you're trying to place them around this hexagonal board and put them in such a way that you'll have, that they will destroy the competition when the, when an attack happens. You're ultimately trying to de destroy your opponent's base. And each unit has different numbers on it, so three is the high priority, I think the threes happen first, and the twos and the ones, and so when, when the board fills up or when somebody plays an attack tile, the game stops and you sort of go through this puzzle of this thing shoots this, then this thing dies. And so you're, you're trying to place things in a way that 
your opponents won't be able to attack when a fight happens. Really is how it works. It, it's difficult to describe, honestly, but that's kind of how it is. There's an app version as well, which takes. I mean, one one of the, the game's real only negative is that that combat is not very intuitive and it's easy to miss a step. You really have to be very methodical to run it on the table, and the app, of course, takes care of that for you. But it's it's a lot of fun, and each there's a, I don't know how many armies there are now. There's like twenty, I think, and they're yeah. all very different, and there still are new ones coming out. I've got one sitting over here that came out at, uh, I think, Essen that I haven't even opened yet uh, because I still have some that I, that I haven't played with from before. It's it's a lot of fun, though. It's it's a great, short, tight game for two. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go beyond two, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, you can play it solo. There's sort of some puzzles that you can do, but that's not really, a, it's just more of a puzzle than a game. And then yeah. there's the ability to play with three or four, but I think that's a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I, I do agree. This is a two player game. Just ignore the rest of the numbers. And um, yeah, this this game, th- this is a pit fight. This is this is this is the one. And with some cool abilities and, you know, just just straightforward. But with yeah, some some nice twists to with the new armies, as, as I heard at least, and puzzling out your way to like defeat your opponent get to their base and so on and those nets and things and such these are <laughs> really cool as well mm-hmm. and some some faction like the factions are really different as well so there's a symmetry yeah. as well the symmetry in a pit fight is is a nice combination so mm-hmm. yeah, i like it, it i was... like it yeah but i i don't know if like this, this game is not for me this this style of a game like a pit fight game is not really for me but nice choice yeah mm-hmm. And it was recently re- reprinted in a fantasy theme. Uh, the problem there is that the fantasy one doesn't have as many monolith. factions yet. So Monolith Arena. And I like Monolith Arena. And it has sort of a little bit of extra choice in that you've got this one unit that spreads out to three. And you can kind of customize what's in there. But the fact that currently there's only, I think, five armies for that with the expansion versus the 20 that you've got with Nirishima Hex makes Nirishima Hex a, a the winner in, in that particular fight just because there's more choices and if you don't like something you've got something else you can try if, you, if something if you know a lot of range doesn't work for you you want something that's more mobile you can go with that or there's uh, more differentiation than that but we don't have time to go into it today we can do my top 20 Nirishima hex factions at some point if you want but yeah yeah, um, yeah. yeah anyway, the, the, that's... the best thing i liked about this one by the way is just as small as that the um the choice of the tiles you draw tiles and you have to you know get rid of something and then choose something yeah. else and so the, this this is cool yeah anyway yeah there's right. hex 3.0 all right and the number 68 is a game that i don't think you liked nearly as much as i did oh no uh, this is a uh oh yeah <laughs> The game is Carson City. The actual oh, game, not the card game. The card game is kind of a disappointment. But the uh, yeah, the board I, game itself is a lot of fun. It's a great work. It's it's a it's the way that I really enjoy to do the worker placement, tile placement, because you've got there's this nice sort of river track, and I don't know why we call it that other than that it goes like that. But you 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 place your workers out there, and you can occupy spaces that other people do and have a fight and one person will get to do it the other person gets to go home with some kind of a bonus but really what it's about is you've got you're you're selecting a role and you're trying to build uh this the city in a way that's going to get you all the points and not somebody else and the different buildings interact with each other differently and the placement sometimes matters and sometimes doesn't and with there's a the big box version is the way to go. I don't know if you can even buy it. Oh, the big box? Anymore. Yeah, you can buy it. You, yeah. I think you cannot but, buy I mean, I don't the know old that you version. Can buy the, the, yeah, that's what I mean. I don't think you can buy the version without the expansions, but you probably want those because you've got more buildings and more choices and more interactions to go through and a different set of characters. You only use, I think, seven of the character roles each game. I don't. I, I might be wrong on the number. But you, you are going to use a different... There's a bunch of different ones you can use each time. And so... It's, it's a really fun, older game of this style that has nice interactions that you don't normally see in this type of a game. And it's 
I don't know. It, I don't know that it looks the best. I, I kind of wonder if it's the same person who did the art as the guy who did Seven Continent or not Seven Continent, uh, Golden Ages. But but regardless, it's it's a fun older game that you can that, that still holds up really well. Yeah, I I like the work completion parts. Yeah, I kind of like building up. This I always do like those kinds of things, but. I think the the thing that bothered me the most was the micromanagement of, of you know, this building interacts with this building and you always need to watch. And if you're teaching this to new players, you need to watch their things as well because they're going to do true. mistakes. And it's, it's, it's a hell of a teach and like micromanagement with the new players, especially I was just, oh my God. And I, I always like, I have quite a few people who, like want to play new games and try new games so i was like i'm gonna teach it to new folks all the time and i'm like no this is not for me yeah too yeah, much micro it's not for everybody but it is for me anyway uh carson city the big box yep. to say the big box because the older one is not available i think it's out of print right mm -hmm. all right next one Next one is number 67, and number 67 is a game that kind of came and was exciting and then went and that had an expansion that had some issues, and uh, I don't know if it's still alive anymore, but it's it's a fun little game. That's Spectre Ops. Mm -hmm. This is a hide-and-seek type game. You've got one person who's moving in secret and a number of other people, and that number should not be more than two, who are... <laughs> Who are mo who are trying to catch that person? I think it works best as a as I kind of alluded to a two or a three player game. I think if you get more than that, you're it's 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 not as much fun. But you're if if you're the agent, I think is what it's called. I forget the roles, but if you're the one who's who's running and hiding, you're trying to hit certain objectives, and those objectives might be on the board or depending on the number of opponents the opponent might know generally where they are and then what you're trying to do is activate three of these objectives and get out without getting caught and so there's some interesting play you only have a certain number of turns and so you're trying to use those turns to sort of throw the other people off use moments of visibility and special events to kind of trick them whereas the other people the the, the hunters are trying to catch you and they're using their special abilities and working together and they can move faster and it always feels like they're right on top of you of course if you're playing as the hunter it feels like we don't have any idea where this guy is so it's it's just uh, it's, it's a really fun mo game full of tense moments and it's not super long you do have to let the more experienced person play the uh, the the agent who's hiding because if you don't do that right you can kind of mess up some of the rules which is unfortunate but i i like playing both roles and i love playing this game and i've i've played with the expansion a little bit but even the basic game is is just great yeah never tried this one looks nice never tried this one? Oh. no 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 i've never tried okay. it. i'm not into uh one versus all usually no, but so. it could be one versus one true that but I don't know. It's it's like one versus one. The other one is controlling the uh, all the, the like the good or the bad guys. It depends on the point of view. But I mean, like, yeah, I'm not into. I don't those think there are any game. good guys in this game. Any kind of a, like <laughs> the the stealth movement, you know, all the all of this mm -hmm. white chapel and things. And so I'm just Fury Dra Dracula is the only one that we tried. Though we fail with the rules a little bit, so. <laughs> yeah, we do. But we, that that game is more vulnerable than this one, because uh, yeah, just the. But you're right; th those games do have the problem that if if things don't work a hundred percent on the person who's sort of breaking all the rules and moving off the board, it can be very. It it, it can kind of ruin the experience. This one's a little bit easier because there's not quite as many rules, and the combat's yeah. definitely easier. So it's it's if you were gonna try a game like this, this is a better intro. But okay. many game. I I I, lo I love this kind of game, and I I was amazed when there's a soul there's even a solo version a solo game with this this mechanism. Not this game, obviously, and it's not on my list. But it's just interesting how this is how this sort of keeps coming up, and people keep trying to find the best way to do this. But this is this one is a a good entry in this type of series, and it 
it's not long and it's not super hard and it's it can be a lot of fun. Okay. So you should try it someday. <laughs> drops. Yep. Your next one. My next one. Uh, this one might be replaced, I've heard, by a, a new edition of it. But number 66 is a chaotic game that makes, my sister would describe it as the game that makes you angry at your family. Uh, the game is Magic Maze. Yeah. And this is a game where you're trying to, thematically it's a little bit odd, you're trying to move through a fantasy shopping mall and steal from four stores at the same time. But, and then escape, which, which is a weird, a weird theme, but also not overdone. But really what you're doing is you've got this, this stack of tiles and you're trying to accomplish some goals, but each person can only take one or two actions. So, and we're all playing in, in a real time moment where we have to, and we're not, we're restricted on our ability to communicate with each other. And so the only real way to communicate is with this red pawn and slamming it gently or firmly in front of somebody else, which says, hey, wake up and do something. It's a short game. If you don't make use of the ability to flip that timer, it's a very short game. Uh, and it's a hectic game, and it can be very frustrating for some people, but I think it's a lot of fun. And I, I think if you have more people, it's definitely easier, just because people have that. there's the same number of actions. And so you've got a little bit less to control. But then again, getting communicating with people is a little bit more difficult with bigger groups. I don't know. There's a million little, uh, well, not a million, but something like 20 extra modules you can add in. And I don't know how interesting some of those are. I, I've not gotten all the way through. I've played the first two or three versions several times. But then by that point, we're usually ready to be done because we've played it five or six times and that's enough for a night. Uh, anyway, I'm interested in the expand or the, the re re envisioning, which is the on oddly Mars. named magic maze on Mars, but it looks like it might be a little bit more intuitive in how some of the things work because this one is all directional. Uh, whereas that one's color based. And so that's maybe a little easier to do. Either way, I, I like Magic Mage Maze a lot, and even though Ma it's not for Magic Mage, <laughs> well, the ma uh, most mages are magic, but Magic Maze <laughs> is no, a fantastic, Rick. if frustrating, game. Don't you agree that there will be a great game, Magic Mage? I think that game has been made forty-two times already. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the, through the Mage Wars. Okay, no, no. Um, well, I, and a variety of others. Yeah, I, I do. I, I do like Magic Maze. I don't know him, but I mean, like, I played it, and I find it more easier with with less players. So I, I I'll really like it with two players. Hmm. More players means yeah, more communicating. Thus, if you cannot communicate, it's it's more difficult, and everybody has only like one choice what they can do, and somehow having one choice is more difficult than having like two choices or three choices you know that you can do so you can you can turn like left and right this is easier for some people than you can just only turn left because you cannot you know forget that and try to you know for, forget about like you cannot go right and stuff like that so i i like it with two players i played it you ha need to have a right person though like you need to have the right people in the group to play this game not everybody clicks with that one and the you know the the chaotic and, and kind of a stressful moments that he has, I've played through seven levels as a two-player okay. game. And okay. they do get more interesting as you go further. At some point, maybe it's a little bit too much. They have like 16 levels or something like that. Something oh, like no, that. I think it's more than 20 with the expansion. Oh, more than 20 with the expansion. But I'm like, uh, with the base game, I went through, okay. we went through like a half, let's say. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, it was really fun. I'm like, how they introduce those modules in there is really cool. They make it really good. So, uh, anyway, Magic Maze, a nice choice. I like it. Okay. All right. All Your right. next one. Number 65. Number 65 is an older game that has really held up well for me. Uh, it's a game that my, I have some friends and some family members that just always wanted to play this. And I was probably, I mean, there was a summer where I must play this almost every day. Monopoly? So the game is Agri Agricola. Oh. I was afraid. And, um, a 
Agric- I mean, I, I took this one. I lived in Budapest. I took this with me. And we, uh, I mean, my friends, would, we'd meet up at this cafe and just play this game. I mean, or we'd, we'd go for away for the weekend and just play Agricola for you know, <laughs> several times in a row. It, for some reason, captured the magic that many games have tried to capture and, 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 and failed. This is um, a game where you're building up a farm. Really, that's what you're doing. You've got these two farmers, and each farmer can take an action, but eventually you can have children, and you'll get more access to more actions, but then you've got to feed your people. This was, I don't know if it's the first game that did it, but it's definitely the game that that brought that to a, a resounding popularity. If you don't, you take horrible amounts of negative points. Uh, it's a loan you can never pay back. <laughs> But you've got animals. You can get a bunch of animals and have them breed. You can grow crops on your fields. The you, you the way the scoring works, you want to have a little bit of everything. But you also have the ability, you've got 14 cards at the start of the game. And those 14 cards define your, sort of give you some guidance on your strategy and let you break rules in a different way. Um, and there are a lot of them. The game is still coming out with new cards. Even, I mean, it's, I think it's, I don't remember when this game came out, but it's been, been like 2008 or something. Um, mm-hmm. So even this much, you know, 10 years later, more than 10 years later, expansions still coming out. And each different deck has different ways to modify your strategy. And it's, it, you, you'll never play the same game, even though the, the uh, orders the, the the different actions come out in kind of the same order more or less each time. I think it's great. I love Agricola. I love it. Just it's it's got some magic that just many games have tried to do and failed. And I I definitely it's definitely one of my more played games, even though it was before I started recording them uh, as diligently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I have nothing to say. I just don't care about Agricola. Never played it. You can hate me now. There you go. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Number 64. Number 64 is a cooperative game. It is, it's recently been revamped, but I don't have the new edition out of the game. is Ghost Stories. Mm. And this is a game where you're a team of uh, four monks that are trying to banish various uh, asian themed ghosts i <laughs> i don't know the mythology behind them but they're kind of creepy looking and you're using you've got special abilities but really you're moving around this board and rolling dice to try and get the symbols that you need to vanquish different ghosts and there's most of the game kind of works around mitigating how those dice rolls are going to work you can get tokens that you can spend you can get other spe- access to other special actions that help you to make certain ghosts easier to vanquish and then the ghosts come out and they have their own negative powers that cripple you <laughs> it's a challenging game i mean i've uh, I, I don't know if it's uh, many people talk about how difficult the game is and it is difficult to win but not as impossible as some people seem to think i mm-hmm. really like one of its expansions the white moon expansion which added a whole lot more choices there's also the black something expansion the i don't want to say black knight black ghost or i don't remember what it was but there was a second expansion that was not as much fun that made it into a one versus all game and that just didn't quite work as well with the cooperative nature of the original game but at, at its core or with its first expansion it's it's a lot of fun and it's a good solid challenge and I'm very excited to try this uh, new Last Bastion version, which is the fantasy-themed one that's uh, that should be on its way to me now. But I even even without the reprint, I, I really like the old original Ghost Stories. Yeah, this game is uh, yeah, it's 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 a classic for me. I don't know it anymore. Um, I played the expansion, the first one, I think, the White Moon, I think. Yeah, was one. I played this one, so. I played the base game quite a few times. Um, it's it's very catchy, you know. If you lose, you want to do it again because it's it's like a very t- it's like it's also like a pit fight, but it's a it's a you pit always fight. miss it by that much. Yeah, yeah, it's a pit <laughs> fight cooperative puzzle. It's it's a pit puzzle. 
<laughs> what? Anyway, yeah. I don't know I, what's I, on your mind, my friend. I <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> I'm just okay. singing it out loud. Anyway, um, yeah, I do enjoy this game quite much. I would, I would like to play. You know, kind of a. I would like to go back to some of the like older games that I played like a few years ago, uh, the games of the past, you know, and you know maybe on the cruise we could do something like that, you know, just bring out those old games and play them again and like have fun remembering them because uh, this this game is is good. I mean, like, this game is really good. Mm -hmm. It just it, it it's outdated for now. Maybe it needs a little I don't bit of revamp. I mean, I, Maybe. I well, was well. I mean, it obviously got one. So, I, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know how. What what's changed in the new version yet? So, we'll have I don't to know see. either. So, anyway, so that's ghost stories. Let's go to right. the next one. Number sixty three is another game that I think you like. Uh, this is Abyss. This is the uh, one that had the five different box covers. Never uh, heard about I, that game. Yeah, I, I think you've played it with me before a few times. Have uh, I? Or somebody. I don't, I don't remember. Know. I played it on the cruise, but maybe you weren't with us that time. Anyway, regardless, we've got what, Thanos there on the box. Um, this is, <laughs> the theme is a little bit loose on this game. It's sort of an underwater type of a thing, but it's it's more of just the game. It's, it's an interesting game because you're trying to get points in a variety of different ways. And the main mechanism is that you've got this deck of cards, and you put out a tag, or you put out a card, and before you can buy it, everybody around the table has first dibs on it, and then they'll give you money, and then they become more expensive. And the money is these pearls that roll all over the table, but fortunately, you've got a little bowl to keep them in. And so you're trying to get these cards, and then you'll use the cards to purchase these other these lord cards that have special abilities sometimes or, or worth points. And then you can get these other things. If you've got a certain number of those lords with this key symbol, then you've got this bigger display of tiles you can get to help you to score. So it's an interesting way of... You know, the puzzle of how to score is, is, is one aspect of the game. But just the, the general mechanisms of the game are so simple and straightforward. And it's not a long game by any means. And it's a frustrating game because, you know, you draw some card and everybody else has that you really wouldn't want and need. And you're sitting and thinking, OK, please don't buy this from me because I really want it myself. Uh, it's the, the artwork is really good. I've played with the first expansion. I have the second one, but I haven't played with it yet. But the first expansion allows you to use these corrupt pearls that you can that are worth negative points to you, especially if you have the most of them. And you can't get rid of them. Once you once you take them, you can only ever use one uh, at a time. And it's it's very difficult to get rid of them. But they allow you to do interesting things. The things that the, the, the corruption cards are usually the ones that you want because they're better. And those pearls are kind of why I don't know. It's it's difficult to describe and it's a difficult game to describe, but it's a lot of fun to play. I don't know if it's still being supported and if, if there's any more coming from it. I know there was sort of a a slimmed down version that came out at at, at Essen, but I uh, know it's game is, conspiracies is like a card game, like well, a basic so card this. game. <laughs> I mean, this is essentially a card game with a board. But um, conspiracies <laughs> is like a set collection, like like though this one is also, but I mean, like uh, yeah. conspiracies. <laughs> Kind of like the, I'm, I'm, I haven't played conspiracies, but it's kind of like different games. Okay. So, I've well, seen I mean, it, so. it's probably as hard to describe as Abyss is, uh, but, <laughs> but I really like Abyss. I'm interested to try the new one, but the and I'm someday interested to try the new expansion. But uh, the, and it's not even new anymore. It came out a year or two ago, the Leviathans. But yeah, anyway, I I really like Abyss. So uh, this one is like. Um, it's. I think it's. It's supported because uh, first of all, there should be like an anniversary edition coming out oh. with the new play mats that fits both expansions. So oh, there, there's okay. there's new edition coming, kind of, kind of something like that. I don't know what it includes there if there's something different or the, it's just like a reprint with like new faces, whatever. It, I think it doesn't change the rules. <laughs> it just you know a reprint that they're gonna do like an anniversary, like five year anniversary edition things so but yeah th this game is really good um with new players though you say it's it's not long 
like with with both expansions it it tends to be a little bit longer and it's hard to explain because of those <laughs> black pearls sometimes yeah, and the black pearls uh, that you can spend only one at a time at certain spots if you get in the leviathan expansion this game becomes even more interesting i love the leviathan expansion it's essential to the game i love the game with that i i do really like the game really much mm -hmm. but it makes the game a little bit longer game. yeah it makes the game a little bit longer because of the different strategies because now you're not only like getting the lords you're also getting the leviathans and you're spending cards there as well which means that you're not like spending all those cards and lords and getting things out faster you know but uh and the monster track like now there's no monster track now there's leviathans you fight it's really really cool i think it's cool yeah but well, i'll try it someday it prolongs the game <laughs> we should try it i mean like if we get a chance to cruise i can teach you and it's 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 easy um the expansion is easy but all all of it together can prolong the game with more players with new players uh, never play with five just play it with oh. three four players <laughs> I, i'd say yeah five players is a stretch no, i mean like you shouldn't five do players it. Is, is is a no with almost every game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because well, with five, it doesn't really depend for me. <laughs> I mean, like it depends on the, the game is okay with five. Yeah, it depends on the action. So in, in in this game though, like in this game, you have to offer your cards that you pull out during exploration to every player, which means that with five players, you have four players. You have to ask everyone all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's getting annoying. So I like it with yeah. three, max four players. Okay. That's my sweet spot. So. Really great choice, the best. Yeah, let's go right. next one. Moving on down, we have number sixty-two, which is Raiders of the North Sea. Raiders. This, or this is a game. I don't know if you've played this one, but no, this is an interesting. So this this particular guy, he 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 takes, he does a lot of games that all sort of take a common theme and add an interesting twist to it. So in this game. Everybody has one uh, little action pawn, and each turn you're going to place it out and do an action, and then you'll pick up a different one. So you start and end the turn with the same number of, of workers or action pawns. And what you're really trying to do is to gain the cards and resources you need to go and attack various settlements, and that's how you'll get the most points but you're trying to figure out the way to make all this work together. There are two expansions for it. Uh, three, if you count the solo version as a separate expansion. They're both good, but just the basic game is also really good. It's not super long. It can be very frustrating. I mean, this is a game that sometimes makes, I don't know why, but inexplicably makes me feel angry uh, <laughs> and intense, but it's it's a really interesting way to sort of have a game work and it's uh it's definitely the i think the best received of this guy's uh, designs definitely of that series but it's i don't know it's it's deceptively simple and yet still a lot of fun yeah i i've never played, never played it and i don't know um i play champions of midgard though i and uh, kind of somebody's like comparing them sometimes uh i don't know oh, what's the um the comparison uh, for is some maybe reason, the, the, so the comparison is entirely unwarranted but for my for in, in my mind the names i think is what it is uh, it might just be the titles that somehow even though they're not the same at all i think yeah. that might in my mind they often i often okay which one am i talking about but the viking, gameplay is complete viking work completely later, so. different yeah. i mean there's there's really no nothing at all to compare with champions of midgard yeah, but that's that's what I said about. I don't know if I said it somewhere else, but uh, worker placement games is is like is going off my radar right now well, because one... I'm tired of worker placement as as mechanic, mm. kind of. So right. that's why I never tried this one, and I'm not keen to trying all the other. You know, it has the series of games, the paladins and the uh, architects, whatever. Like the new series, medieval, yeah. it's basically all the same stuff in my opinion when I look at it. Uh, I'm just not into work replacements anymore. Well, all right. This is a still a fine game that I quite enjoy. Anyway, yeah. Number sixty-one. Number sixty-one. Number sixty-one is a newer game that really shot up there for me. I, I loved this when I 
I got it and I played it and I was just very excited about it. Uh, the game is called Hadara, H A D A R A. Um, and is it like these Seven Wonders? Yeah, it's it, it. That's that comparison is fair. It, it's okay. it's not a drafting. It's not like the pass your hands around and draft a card type game, but it's sort of a civilization esque theme. Although the theme is is really more of a veneer, and and that's the new version. My version doesn't quite look like that. Oh, but I yeah. really. What, what, what this, you've got is you. Nice. That, that's the one that I have. This one and looks nice. The other version is like. If, well, I'm sorry, but this this <laughs> is like this is bad. Regardless, what what you're doing is you've got this wheel, and on the wheel, so there's five different colors. I think there's five. There's red and yellow and blue and green and purple. That's five, and <laughs> and you so. Every turn, if, the turns aren't very long, but really what happens is you're, the wheel rotates, and so you're going to draw from each pile once, and the wheel just shows you which pile you're supposed to be drawing from this turn. You draw two cards, you choose one to discard, face up into a discard pile, and the other one either to add to your civilization or to throw away for money. That's kind of Seven Wonders-ish. Um, but what you and but and then as you have more cards of the same color, they're going to get cheaper to for you. You get a discount for each card you already have of the same color, and then they give you little attributes that go up on a track. And you've got a yellow track, which is the money you get, and the money is what you use to buy cards. There's the red track, which is military, but not really. It's just a resource that allows you access to these other tiles later on in the game. And then you've got the culture, which is the blue track. And again, it's it allows you to do a, another action later, which can get you points. And then the green is the food, which, again, you don't spend, but you have to have as much food as you have cards. Uh, and so, <coughs> excuse me, that's how it's working. And you're trying to stay alive and get, you know, you, you pick what you're going to work for. And you can choose how you've got four bonus medals that you can buy during the game and some of them are for having cards of different colors, and some of them are for where you are on different tracks. So you can say, uh, I'm not going to worry about purple cards at all. I'm just going to go in all the way on blue and have, you know, get all my points now. I mean, there's there's a lot of choices in how you want to score, and that's kind of fun. It's not long at all. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but that's, that's you know, <laughs> neither here nor there. But it's it's a really interesting way that, that yeah, it feels like Seven Wonders, but not for any particular reason other than that you're building a civilization out of cards. But then again, the theme wasn't very strong in that game either. So anyway, that's a, a new game from this year that I have played lots of times and have really enjoyed. Hadara. Yeah. I got nothing to say. Yeah, it's um, I, it looked like Seven Wonders. I heard it's it's similar to Seven Wonders and... Uh, those are tracks. Um, they remind me of uh, the game called uh, not the patchwork, but the patch history. Oh, <laughs> remember you get cards and you kind of yeah. count them on those different tracks and things and yep. such. So it kind of reminds me of that. So, yeah, kinda. again, I, I mean, thematically maybe, but I, I don't know that it feels at all like patch history. That was a much more complicated game. Um, th this so is a good one. pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, we're, we're getting here toward the end of this particular list. We've got 10 more to go. Number 60 is a game we talked about on my underrated games uh, list that we did a couple weeks ago. But right. this is a Riverboat. Mm -hmm. Riverboat is a boring-looking Euro game, and it is a game that I had completely ignored until somebody said, hey, have you tried this? And I tried it, and I loved it. It's um, it's a weird. I mean, it's it's a hard game to describe. You've got different actions, and you're going to choose which action you're going to lead. And so you're trying to get crops. So like maybe you pick the get crops action. So you've got first choice there, and you get some sort of a bonus. And you're trying to make sort of groups of one particular crop. You're trying to fill up areas with these hexagonal shaped tiles. You're trying to move your little guy along a track so that you you can score from these boats that you can buy, and the boats give you special actions. You're trying to place these little buildings on the board that score based upon what's around them. There's a lot of different things you can do, and there's not a lot of time. It's, I think, four rounds in this game, 
and then you're done. And it's, it's a, a, I don't know. I find it to be a fascinating little game that every time I've played it, we've just always sort of been, okay, let's, we, we, we've got to play that one again. This is a, it's, it's a surprisingly good game. And I, I say that because the title doesn't really grab you and the look of the game doesn't really grab you. And the theme of the game is troubling, but, <laughs> but the game yeah. itself is excellent. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought about like, if I would like take this board and on the picture and put it into heaven and nail, would somebody notice? It, it looks like heaven and nail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can mix and match. Maybe it's an expansion. Yeah, it's an uh, expansion. Huzzah. <laughs> uh, the games could not be more different, but. Oh my God. It's the same well, as heaven and nail. It looks like that. Well, it, it, it does look very, I, I can see the, uh, the arts, the art direction seems to have come from a similar place, uh, and that place is Germany. But <coughs> Clemens, <coughs> France, yeah. But it's um, but the game itself is very different than Heaven and Nail. But it's it's really good. It's one that I actually suggest that many people try. Just you sort of swallow your pride on on the way that it looks, and <laughs> and the boring title. As a game itself, it's really good. I, I forget who did it, but I think it was it's it's Michael somebody. Kissing. Oh well, you know, he's he's fairly reputable as well. He's done a, a lot of really good games, so um, I don't know. That doesn't mean this one's good, but I think it is. So, all right, let's go to the next one. All right, the next one is number fifty-nine. It's another game we talked about on on our uh, underrated games list. It was my number one on that list. That's City of Remnants. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about it recently, but it was part of a different series. Uh, this is a it was one of the earlier games from Plant Hat. It was their third game. And it was, it's a dark game that had some graphical design problems. It was recently reprinted into another game that also has some graphical design problems of a different order. And that is uh, Neon Gods. But really it's, a, it's an odd game. You've got this territory control that you're trying to do. You've got some deck building. You've got sort of in your face combat. You've got, building these buildings and trying to mine points in a different way. It doesn't really fit into any box uh, other than its own, but it's, it's a really interesting game. It's, it's one that isn't super yeah. easy to find anymore, but, and I, you know, you don't really hear anybody talking about it, but I really love it. It's a game that I have one friend who really likes to play it. And sometimes he'll remind, he'll say, I forget what he calls it. He calls it something else, and then I bring the wrong game. But now that I figured out that it's this one, I <laughs> I, I know and I can bring it. I I really like City of Remnants. Unfortunately, I can't describe it because it's just such an odd game. But it's a lot of fun. It's it maybe a touch on the long side. That might have uh, that might be a problem. But that's easy. That's easy enough to shorten as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I don't know if you've played it. I don't think no. you have. Um, yeah. And uh, it's it's not one that you'll see sitting around anywhere, but it's it's worth your time. It's worth at least one try because it does a lot of things that other games just don't do. But you mm -hmm. need a lot of space for it. It's it takes up a lot. It sort of devours your table with all mm -hmm. the building displays you have to put up. Yeah, we already talked about this one, so I really yep. think about this one right now. So, <laughs> all right, the next one. The next one is number 58, and number 58 is a game that I've talked about with you many times. The game is Dice Throne. Oh. Dice Throne is a sort of head-to-head -head competitive Yahtzee-style game. You've got a character, and you've got this board with special abilities, and you're rolling dice and trying on your turn. You've got your standard, you know, three rolls, and you're trying to get a combination that's going to allow you to attack your opponent. You're trying to reduce your opponent down to zero life. And each of the different fighters is different. There's a season one and a season two, and they're fully compatible. I mean, I just keep them together. There's not any reason not to. But all the different fighters are different, and they've got a deck of cards that will allow you to do special actions or upgrade your attacks. And <clears throat> it's just it's just a lot of fun. It's not long, and it's... Although there's I think one of the fighters I don't like very much, but the rest of them I, I, I really do. 
And I'm looking forward to the season three that's going to come out eventually, I'm sure. It hasn't been announced yet other than my, other than by me. But <laughs> they're also reprinting the first edition now, which is uh, going to be better because the first edition isn't nearly as nice as the second edition. But it's it's a good game, especially for two. Okay, yeah. I, I have nothing to say about this one. I, I do... Um... You might enjoy like how it, it looks. I've never played this one though. Well, you you tend to like most of the Roxley games anyway, and yeah, th- yeah this yeah. one is, is super fast, and it's it's essentially like I said, it's a competitive head to head Yahtzee. I have not played with more than two, but I don't think the game is even though again it's one of those things where it says you know two two to four or whatever, but that just doesn't seem like it would work. It just doesn't seem like it would be nearly as much fun because. You have to like make a roll to target people, and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to attack, I want to attack. <laughs> you know, there's, it's just, I don't know. I'd be willing to try it one time and see if I loved it. Hopefully, I'm mm-hmm. wrong that I would hate it. But as a two-player game, it's fantastic. All right, yeah, let's try it sometime. And super fast. Again, it's it's not a long game by any means. Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right. The next one is a game that uh, for a long time, I was the only person around here that had it. I, it's the last video review I did. I, I, I always think I want to do more of those, but then I never get around to it. It's Die Quacksalbe von Quedlinburg. This was uh, a big, big hit uh, last year. This is um, English title Quacks of Quedlinburg, I think. Uh, this is what number... you got is this cauldron with with a spirally track and a bag and you're pulling chips out of the bag and you put chips in and if it's a two you move it two spaces forward and you've got a number of these white chips that cause you to explode and so you don't want those and you do want all the other chips because they give you various special abilities and it's your you know every turn you're gonna everyone you say go and everyone draws the chips out fills their cauldron until you decide to stop or have the explosion then you activate some special abilities, then you buy more chips, and then you repeat. It's 10 rounds of, of that, but none of those rounds is very long because most of the action is happening simultaneously. In fact, all of it really is, and it's a lot of fun. It's mm-hmm. got this very interesting push-your-luck aspect because you're not allowed to look in your bag, even between turns, and so you have to kind of remember, okay, I know I, I've got, I can feel in there that there are four chips, I know how many white ones I've got, and I can tell that two of them are white. I don't remember what the other two are, but you know, then you like, oh, one more, one more, and then you either celebrate or pine away at your lack of uh, impulse control. It's mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. I love the expansion as well. Expansion came out. It's uh, essentially adds a few new. You play with the same number of books each game of ingredients. It adds a, a new one of those for each of the of the colors. But then it adds these witch tiles, and you play with three of those, and you can activate each witch once during the game to give you a special ability, a one-time special ability. And the timing of when to do that is is it sort of adds to the puzzle. It's it's just great. Uh, I also have the upgraded components that Board Game Geek came out with, which replace these little cardboard chits with nice plastic pieces that are a little bit more fun and and easier to handle and less likely to show wear and tear anyway i i had uh like i said this was a game that i got from germany back when it came out and people loved it here but could only play it with me because it was in in german and didn't have i mean you don't have to know the, there's not a whole lot of reading that goes on in it, but you have to understand what the different actions are. So mm-hmm. I played it a ton because of that, because everybody wanted to play it and had to do it with me. Now that it's widely available, it's a game that I recommend to just about anybody. It's, it's so fast and fun. And I don't know that I've ever had it go poorly. I don't think anybody's not loved this game mm-hmm. that I played it with. Yeah. I don't know much about the game. So I, I oh, you still haven't played it? No, no, I haven't oh. played it. No, no, I skipped it. Ah. German I Euros things and so I oh, it, I, it, it is German, but that is, but it is definitely not a Euro game. This is very light and fun and very fast. I, I think this one is one that you probably should try. Mm. Okay, okay. 
So that was number. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll be on the cruise. So. Oh, oh okay. I, I'm surprised if you find it difficult to try. Okay, so this was number. This was 50... number fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Yes. Fifty-seven. Five, Fifty-seven. All right. 56 is a game that I know you have played, and it's a game that you know that I love. This is uh, the Arkham Horror card game. Mm -hmm. And it is a, a great game. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's very story-driven. You're playing through a campaign, and you have a character, and there's a little bit of kind of deck upgrading between scenarios. But really what you're doing is playing through a story. And whether you win or lose, you usually move on to the next story. There's a couple of points where that might not happen, but uh, you move on with sort of some different statuses as you go along. The story is always very interesting. There are, <clears throat> there's the base campaign, there's the Dunwich Horror, there's the King in Yellow, there's the, um, you know, the Azathoth one, there's the weird adventure one, which I liked less, and now there's a new dream one that I haven't started yet. There are also some one-off scenarios uh, that are really fun. My favorite, I think, is the Excelsior Hotel. But mm -hmm. it's, it's nice because there's just it's a game where you play. There's a little bit of game and a lot of story is kind of how I would describe it. And it's, it's kind of like sitting down and reading a book, except you're drawing shit out of a bag and <laughs> collecting resources and putting cards on your table. I really like the Arkham Horror card game. I uh, and there's a lot there because there's you can play each scenario by itself if you don't want to play the campaign. So it's it's worth yeah. trying. Yeah, I do enjoy this game. It's this is Arkham Horror, but I like a streamlined version and it's just fun and it's fun with two players as well. To be honest, at least for me, it is. You can I've played it with well, I guess technically seventy five people. But uh, I think one or two is probably the, uh, the, the, the way where I find the game to be most enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the one. Right. All right. Good choice. 55 is another game that I know you know and a game that I think you like. Oh, this is First Class. It's yeah. First Class something on the Orient Express. Journey on the Orient Express. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Um, All aboard the Orient there Express. There we go. Um, the theme in this game is not really there, but no. um, and I, think, I actually think this is a game that you got me on to. I think you got my uh, interest in this game, but really what you've got is you are selecting cards from this. There's a tableau of cards, and you're selecting the cards and putting them to use. You can use them to build your train up. You can use them to... Um, uh, you can use them to move, uh, to build this track for your train to go along to get bonuses. And after you take a certain number of cards, three or four, uh, then there's a scoring. And then you do it again, and you've got different cards that are coming out in different areas of the game. It, the box sort of sells itself on the fact that there are five modules, although there's a sixth one as well that you can get as a promo. Um, and they sort of change the way that you're going to play the game, change what kind of scores for you give you different opportunities to collect bonuses. It's one of those games where really what you're doing is activating a bunch of bonuses. Um, yep. And that's that's a fun thing to do because you're like, oh, I get to do this and this and this and this and this. And, and I get a million points because of this. But then the other people also get a million bonuses and a million points. So it's, it's a game that's difficult to unpack, I mean, in terms of how you're going to do it. And maybe a tougher game to learn your first time but really a lot of fun and not a whole lot of rules overhead actually still haven't played that murder mystery one i've played all the rest but mm. the murder mystery just i don't know why but it's one that when i say to people we could try this they're like well let's try the suitcases one instead uh <laughs> yeah, it's um <clears throat> the murder mystery one is the one that can frustrate because this game is all about like everybody getting points and getting to some kind of a conclusion in the murder mystery one somebody is going to lose automatically which is like it, it creates this kind of elimination thing mm -hmm. which is not fun at all and I, I i haven't played the murder mystery one oh. yeah but i read the rules and each time i think about that i'm like i'm not gonna play this one although i, I think we started playing this one and then 
I think we didn't like it. Something like that. I, I don't remember, but we're like, let's not touch this one. Murder Mystery. Well, even uh, even if you it. don't like that one, there's still the four others that you can use, and then there's that, that sixth one that you can buy separately. Uh, F and G. No, there's the two. Oh, two there's a G ones. as well. I yes. didn't know there was a G. You don't have it? Well, I have only F, so I apparently have some work to do. <laughs> oh, yes, because I, I do have... Um, I just bought it like I search through the geek market because it's really hard to to get those i got promos the tea party and whatever else was there and th these are also fun i tried the promos as well like mini expansions these are really cool yeah. tiny additions that add to that kind of a chain reaction and the other one was the uh yeah the g g, g module is the magician module i haven't tried this one. oh yeah something like that it's like a kind of a push a lock i think so some, okay. some kind of that well, thing I'll like try that one that sounds like fun yeah, and yeah, this game, yeah, I do agree. Um, this game is all about like uh, getting those chain reactions. It's kind of like engine building, but in a way of getting the chain reaction of actions. Mm -hmm. So I get those zeros, I turn them into ones and twos, and that boosts this up, and I get this fifth wagon out, and then I get whatever else. Go, yep. goes from there like a snowball you know rolling snowball which which i do adore in this game though it shouldn't be points out games are not my favorite games usually as, as you as you can see this is a german euro with point salad aspect with not that that great of an artwork or or you know theme no theme i do like it this is an exception it's a rule yeah all right good chase first class okay well, number 54 is another game that I know I've played with you. In fact, I played it with you the first time I'd ever played it because it had just arrived when I came to Estonia. The game is Burgle Brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this is a cooperative game where you are trying to work together to uh, rob, to, to pull off some heist in a three-story building. And you've got a spe character with special abilities. You've got actions each turn, which can be, you know, I can peek at the room and see what I'm going into because some of the, you, you start with the three floors of the building all face down, and then you're trying to find your way up to the top floor. You're trying to find the three safes and be able to open them. There's a little bit of dice rolling and luck management in there, but there's also a lot of, okay, do I, do I just rush in to save time? and risk setting off an alarm, or do I sort of move slowly and carefully because I don't want to aggravate these guards. There's some, there's guards that are patrolling faster and faster and faster on each floor. And it's, it's a great little cooperative game. It's a very small box, but uh, the game <laughs> unpacks to be a lot uh, bigger than the box would make yes. games. And, and it's, it's just, it's a really good way to do a cooperative game. There's, everybody sort of has a moment to shine. I'm excited about this new casino version that's coming out, uh, I guess, in 2020. Yeah. But I I, don't know, I really like Burgle Brothers. I, I don't know that I've loved all the other games that are kind of... Sh There's a few games that kind of share the same artwork and some that share the same characters, and I haven't loved any of them quite as much as I've loved this one. Fugitive, I, I think you, you're thinking about well, there's Fugitive, there's this, um, what was this one with the scientists and the spies with this huge box that you fold out on the table? Um, Fugitive Spies? No, no, no. No, only you've uh, played that game. Um, I forget <laughs> what its name is. It was Sabotage, that's what it's called. Okay. Um, and I that one's a little bit overwrought. Uh, there's a lot of other games that kind of use the same artwork and the same kind of character, like the same characters I think are in Sabotages are in this one. And there's Word Domination, which was a weird word game. It's fun, but a weird word game. Uh, um, you know, but Burgo Brothers is definitely the best of this particular uh, designer's work. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I, do, I do enjoy it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's all about the puzzle. This game is just puzzle with some dice rolling but you can kind of mitigate it the things and see where the guard is going and kind of a uh, predict because at some point if more uh, movement cards are out for the guard you can kind of uh, see what would be his last options where he could go because like each card represents one uh sure. one square yeah 
So one's a spot. And you can manipulate him by by setting off alarms at the right moment, for example. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're playing cooperatively, like somebody goes to the second floor just because the guard wouldn't move then, and you know, is manipulating the yeah. guard a lot. I yep. do like it. It's uh, the one thing I don't like is the box. It's it's oddly shaped and it's on the door. Yeah, I mean, like everything fits, and it's cool, everything but fits like just barely. I mean, it's it's a shout out to designers or publishers. Just stop doing those thematic boxes. Just do a box <laughs> where I can yeah. store it normally, and when I pull out the game. I set up the game, that's where the theme comes in, when I start playing the game. I don't care if the theme comes from the box, looking at the box. I don't care. I want the to play the game. Like a building. Yeah, cool. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I want, <laughs> I want uh, the good storage for my game, because the game gives me fun, not the box. That's where they tend to forget that, like going too much into the thematic aspects of the game. Like, yeah. <sighs> I hate that. Anyway, I mean, this, this game great is game. very portable, though. So, <laughs> yeah, but it could be another box. It could be also portable, but not a brick. I, I, I agree that it would. It, it did need a slightly bigger box, but so, uh, anyway. anyway. All right, we're Oof. moving on here now to number fifty-three. Number yes. fifty-three is another game I think you liked, although you haven't played it as much as I have. Uh, the game is Vindication. I played only once, so I don't oh, have it. That is not I, as much as I have. I nobody have has it, it and here. It's expansive. So, oh, okay. Oh. Well, and it's it's a big game, and it's kind of expensive. Um, and it has some miniatures in it that are really not very necessary. But I have not it all. and its expansion. And the expansion basically two ways to play solo. That's essentially what the expansion is. Um, <laughs> but it's a really interesting game where you've got this island and you're moving around and you're kind of pulling things out and making the island a little bit bigger and you're trying to manipulate this pool of cubes and trying to get points and then as as the game goes on you're going to put out cards that show how the game is going to end and so you, you the game will eventually end but at the start of the game, there's only really one objective, I think. And then, you know, as, you, as people get more points, another end game objective comes out. And then there's really just which of the different tracks you kind of want. And I say tracks, but I mean which of the different paths you want to go down. There's a way where you can fight all these monsters and get end game scoring. There's a way where you can get these purple relics that give you in game abilities that make things a little bit faster for you. There's the green one that allows you to have different sort of passive type abilities. Then you you you're buying different things, moving around. I mean, it's I don't know where the game fits. It, it kind of feels like it has a little bit more story than it needed to, but yeah. I don't mind it. And then there's a in the base box. There's several different expansion modules you can mix in, uh, even without buying the separate expansion that has two ways to play solo. Uh, but hmm. it's it's a it's a fine game. I really like Vindication. Um, uh, it was a surprise last year. I kind of bought it on impulse after the Kickstarter. It was uh, it was somebody mentioned it, and I thought, well, this looks interesting. And I was maybe it was excited. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was before you had played it. Um, I, oh, I, I, I just saw it. I saw it online, advertised somewhere, and I said, this sounds interesting. Yeah. And I was excited that it ended up being good as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, this game, I I enjoyed it. I played the cruise. Um, yeah. I think it was Peter Vaughan from Breaking Games. Uh, he actually wanted to play, so he taught the game. And it was really cool. Um, we had a good teacher as well. So, But a um, few things that bother me, though, I think they wouldn't bother me if I played more. I, I, I enjoyed the game overly. But like the abstract nature of, of the central board and like the theme and things like the fantasy... I would have loved it to be maybe something else or have more thematic ties. It wants to be thematic, but it's not. I know, like, it's something in between. Yeah, it's a weird game, but I do enjoy it. And it's something I would definitely play more and probably enjoy much more, like, playing it continually. Mm -hmm. So, probably. yeah. Indication, yeah. That's nice. All right. We've only got two left. One of them yes, I don't think you've played, and I don't think is very interesting to you, and the other one I think you have. So 
Uh, number 52 is uh, a lovely little Euro game with some dice drafting. The game is called the Grand Austria Hotel. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, so, all right, this game is not perfect. So I'll say it this way. The game is a lot of fun. And getting everything to work together is is an interesting, delightful puzzle. You're sort of, you've got this cafe, and you get people to come to your cafe. And when you fulfill their needs, you give them the, the, the I don't know, some wine and some cake. And then they say, oh, I like this hotel. I want to stay. And, and they go into a room, which, okay, is a little bit odd thematically, but I guess we had to get there somehow. And then you've got this hotel that, you know, it's apparently not finished. So you've got to put rooms in so your guests can go there. Uh, you've got special ability cards that you're getting throughout the game that give you bonuses. Uh, the problem, the only real problem with the game is the special ability cards. I, this is probably, there's probably a resource you can print off online. It's, it's sometimes difficult to understand what they do. There's a lot of weird symbols in the game. And the the uh, font on the cards is this weird old looking script which just makes it hard to read and difficult to look up so that's my complaint with the game but other than that it's fun you've basically got there's this, these dice on the board and when you when you take an action you get that action is is improved by the number of other dice of that number that are out there and that's really how you're doing it and so on your turn you're taking a die doing an action then it's somebody else's turn and it kind of goes around and then you go backwards and, and do turns the other order. But really what you're trying to do is get different bonuses, meet different goals so that you're not punished when a, an evaluation comes up. It's, there's a lot going on. It's very much of a Euro game and I mean, its name doesn't really belie that. Uh, but it's from a, it's, it's sort of, there's this line of games that I really like and this is one of them. There's also the Council of Fours in there. And I think this barrage is, I think, in that same series and a couple others that I really like. So Grand Austria Hotel is one that I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, this is Clement France and, you know, it's the German Euro stuff thing. And so I've, I've never got to this game, um, though I recently rewatched the, um, the movie called Grand Budapest Hotel. I always think of that when I play this game, even though they're yeah. obviously not connected at all. But but kind of they 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 kind of seem to be, you know, that like this kind of an old style, perfect like hotel management thing, you know, with kind of a I don't know. It just it just yeah. feels like that. Though I mean, like the Grand Budapest Hotel is like more like a murder mystery type thing, but uh, this one I don't know. It kind of started to to kind of a be more of an like be like an interesting target for me to 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 at least try because of the movie i don't know why it's, this is i feel like this is almost an underrated game because i don't you know it's one that people don't really talk about but really it's really good it's it's a great kind of game that fits a whole it, it checks a whole lot of boxes it's got a little bit of something for everybody i would recommend you know printing out some resource that explains what the different cards do but yeah. Other than uh, that, I, I think I, think, I think I should I should break the wall uh, with like this kind of a Clemens Franz and German Euros things and, and just try this game. So I, yeah. I think you you think you might enjoy it. All right. So we go to your last choice. The last one of today, number fifty one. The first, the last one of the bottom half of the list is a game that I have been playing a lot lately. I kind of played it and I liked it a long time ago and then the new version came out and I played it and liked it and then I went away for a weekend with my brother in Minneapolis and played it and it kind of just woke me up and reminded me how much I like the game. The game is Mansions of Madness. Hmm. It is um, it's a, a story and exploration game really. I mean you've got nowadays you play with an app that kind of tells you okay you know you you say I'm doing my I do my actions and then when it's time to fight something it helps you do that. Or, you know, when you want to explore something, you, you touch it and it tells you what it is. But really what you're doing is you're playing through a story and you often don't know what you have to do to win the story at the beginning. But as you go through, you slowly figure that out. It's, there's a variety, a lot of different expansions for it that add different characters and different uh, items and abilities. And if you use everything, um, that's sort of a double-edged sword because you can be in an Aztec temple 
and suddenly find, you know, at the bottom of a, uh, you, know, you reach to the bottom of a pool and find some gardening shears or <laughs> something, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit an anachronistic like that. I think I was in a, there was a murder mystery one that we were playing and I was out looking through, you know, I was in the garage and looking in a pile of tools and I found some ancient relic from a temple that, you know, that, that, okay. that just didn't really, really fit there. That would have been a better place for the garden chairs. But, you know, that is what it is. I guess it's sort of some random number generation that's going on. Still, regardless of some of the odd situations that can result, it's it's got a lot of nice story in it. It's because it's cooperative and because you're using this app, it's it's very easy to play. You don't really have to know very many rules. I mean, you just sort of have to know the different actions you can do on your turn, and that's about it. And fighting is very easy, and the tests are easy. You, you roll these dice, and it's either a success, a failure, or you can spend a, a resource to turn something into a success. So it's, it's just very streamlined, very easy. I did play the old game. I did like the old game, but the older version had... It required one person to run it and to set it. It took about an hour to set up. And if you made even one mistake, it, w it could really ruin the experience for everybody. So this this new one is definitely the way to go. But I, I don't know. I really like Mansion of Madness. So yeah. I don't know if the new one would have made my list if I had made this list before uh, I went away to that weekend. But ever since then, I have played it a lot of times and really enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm going to play this one, but it's something that I should try at some point my life yeah because yeah. i do like cthulhu and arkham Horror and things so maybe this one would be so my only complaint on the cthulhu thing okay is this is a game where i don't think cthulhu ever shows up he's on the box but it's more stories that are kind of in that world yeah. with uh the, Which I do like. the big the big bad never really showing up yeah and uh you know it, it, it's kind of there's another game, this Cthulhu Death May Die, which is which has a similar feel, except the big bad does show up. So if you if you like that same style of game, you, you've got this option. Um, but anyway, it's it's a lot of fun, regardless. Even if, if just if you're expecting Cthulhu, you might have to play something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I... that's one. If 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 you're here before the cruise, Victor really likes this game, so we mm -hmm. we could play that here. Yeah, that might be a good chance. Yeah, to play this one. So yeah, I. Why not? So, this was uh, 75 through uh, 51, and... 75 um, through 51. Only two more lists to go. And uh, this was quite a quite nice list. Quite a few um, really cool choices, in my opinion. Well, few I'm not so good. Approved. A few uh, not so good. Well, I think all of the choices were good, but that's because it's my list. Yeah, it's your list. <laughs> Be, be be ready when we go to my list. Though with my list, we're probably gonna do the um, maybe sub twenty or something like that at most. All right, so this is the end of this episode. It's quite long, but yep. we got to talk about quite a few games. And I mean, like sometimes just rushing through the games in a uh, like so you can do it in a timely manner doesn't really help the viewers because then like you said like oh this is a worker placement game i really like it the artwork is nice let's go to the next game you know some some people do like that you know so some yeah. people like they go they rush through the games explain very basic things with few phrases <laughs> but then i'm like why did you really like the game can you tell me like i want to i want to well, know more about the game more about your I don't know. I, I, I hope you can tell that I really do like these games. These these yeah. games all make me really excited. So, <laughs> yeah, it is. All right, so this is the end here, and we're gonna come back with another episode of Real Casts, uh, the usual one or the special edition. We'll see as we go. We'll see as we go okay. because we need to kind of uh, do both. But on the other hand, so uh, we wanna get the top 100 done before uh it would be good to to have it like before christmas or like before the end of the year that would be good yeah i agree anyway <laughs> thanks for watching right. and we see you another time which is Where 50 is through 26 yeah i'm very excited bye bye
Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop.